This was originally a BLM project. Jared Brackett raises Black Angus cattle in a very remote area known as the Antelope Springs allotment, southwest of Twin Falls. He grazes 600 cow-calf pairs on 50,000 acres of federal, state, and private land in the allotment. You might say that Brackett ranches in a fishbowl because he manages his cattle alongside premium habitat for sage grouse, a candidate species for listing under the Endangered Species Act. The BLM is under court order to manage the area with tight controls to protect sage grouse habitat. But Brackett doesn't worry too much about that because he says Antelope Springs has plenty of feed and habitat for cattle and wildlife. This is as good as it gets in a lot of places. You know, we're quite proud of it. Unless you have something to hide, there's really nothing to be scared of. Because in the end, the resource will show what's there. Over the years, the Forest Service, BLM, and the Natural Resources Conservation Service have partnered with ranchers to develop 50 miles of water pipelines in the Antelope Springs allotment. The pipelines deliver water to many cattle troughs scattered throughout the allotment. It's that group effort that makes it work. The entire allotment is divided into 13 different pastures for winter, spring, summer, and fall grazing. Fencing and agency regulations control where the cattle can graze during each season. The water development gives Brackett and the BLM lots of flexibility. If they don't want cattle to use a particular area, they turn the water source off and push the livestock to another area. In one instance, a group of sage grouse set up a lek at a water trough area. So Brackett shut off the water and left the sage grouse alone to mate during the spring. There's been a water trough here since uh, Ram Sires put the pipeline system in probably in the 70s. I have four other troughs in this field, and so it's not a big deal for me to turn this water trough off during that lecking. And it makes it so that those birds can lack without being disturbed. Ken Crane of the BLM explained another example of cattle and water management in a different sage grouse lecking area. This red triangle here is an occupied lek. So what we wanted to do was use water at, to manage the distribution of livestock. So and that's what we did in here. Jared turned this water off and kept these two water sources on. So we wanted to try to keep the majority of the use down there. And then the BLM followed up to monitor, map, and document how the cattle used the area during sage grouse mating season. Cattle use was zero to 5% in the sage grouse habitat area shown in beige on the map. All of the water developments in the Antelope Springs allotment have been fenced off to keep cattle out of riparian or wet meadows, leaving them available for sage grouse and other wildlife. For example, Brackett visits a fenced off pond at the head of Bear Creek. This is exclusively for wildlife now, this exclosure. It is on private and it is on our neighbor Mike Gary. This is one of the three legs of our water system and it is a vital source. This is new solar technology. Uh, it takes less panels to run, the pumps are more efficient, and they're better pumps. It is a nice spot and we kind of like to keep it that way, not only for clean water for our livestock, but also clean water for wildlife. Sage grouse use the pond area in summer and fall. Brood rearing, they'd be coming through here. This would be a major water source for them. Um, you can see the the fine grasses around the edges, all the insects, the bugs, major food source. Um, and they will congregate here, especially when it gets drier. You'll see a lot more birds in here. In the top of the Antelope Springs allotment, in an area known as the Beaver Ponds, Brackett developed a third water source that helps keep his cattle widely distributed in Brown's Bench. This really opened up this top field for water. It made a huge difference. It helps keep these cows out of the riparian areas. And I think the cows are generally happier. They don't have to walk in here as far. The water's a lot cleaner, so we're pretty happy with the system. Brackett, who was a member of the Jarbidge local sage grouse working group, helped expand a large wet meadow exclosure to create more brood breeding habitat for sage grouse. About 10 years ago, we talked to the local working group for sage grouse, and because they were after wet meadow areas, we decided that it was probably a good idea to expand the exclosure. And so when we expanded the exclosure, you can see, you see the old fence posts over here. And so you see how this used to encompass probably an acre of ground. Now it's probably close to five acres. Oh, we said, you guys are more than welcome to have all the wet meadow area here. We're not gonna miss it. It's good for the bird. We wanted to use that. 
the BLM monitors and maps livestock use of the allotment throughout the year. All of the pastures in the allotment have specific dates for turnout, the number of cattle allowed, and how much forage can be consumed. Crane says that Brackett's use levels are well within the specified guidelines. On uh, native uplands, Jared's restricted to 30% utilization on upland species. Non-native species, it's 40% for crested wheatgrass. You know, on average, what we find in up here is, you know, 20% or less. So, you know, he's well within what he's required to meet. So we're pre pretty comfortable. When people say we're not doing anything for these sage grouse, you know, we get a little offended because we spend a lot of time and effort working with them. I mean, we're, we're trying to do what's right for everything. We're worried about the antelope, the pygmy rabbits, the spotted frogs. I mean, everything that we have out here, it's a, it's a total picture. We've been protecting and saving it for generations, and we'll continue to. Bottom line, science isn't going to lie to us. And as long as the data is collected properly, processed properly, utilized properly, we're in good shape. <laughs>